In this Photoshop demo, we're going to take a look at how you can change the color of a flower. Hey there, my name is Joe Petralia with Evervisions. Thanks for tuning in. In this demo, we're going to use uh, things like hue saturation and color balance and uh, color range to make a selection and this is going to be sort of the basis of how you might be able to get started in changing the color of something and in this case we're going to change the color of a flower so let's get started all right here we are in photoshop and we're looking at a yellow flower um, i think i took this with a 100 millimeter macro lens on a canon 5d mark ii um, but i want to show you some techniques you can use to change the colors of things in photoshop and um, just one of the ways to kind of get you started with uh, many objects, but um, th in this case we're going to be looking at a flower. Uh, first thing I want to do is create a hue saturation layer, and I want to change this from master to yellows because I only want to target the yellows in uh, the flower and not anything else. And um, I have some numbers that I've already kind of tinkered with earlier when I was trying this out, so I'm just going to punch those in real quick. and save some time. Um, so we went from a yellow flower to a like a coral or a pink flower pretty quickly there. Um, but let's take it a little bit further. Let's select out maybe the outer edges of these petals and leave the inner uh, a different color. And we can see in the original, they're all, it's all, maybe it's a little bit darker of a yellow or orangey yellow in here, but we can kind of um, enhance this a little bit. So the next thing I want to do is uh, select my background layer and go to select and color range and select the outer edge of the, the petals here and up comes the color range dialog and fuzziness slider is sort of like a threshold so anything that's white is going to be selected or affected by what we do next anything that's black will not and I wanted to leave the inner part of that flower unaffected so I'll come with something like a 75 hit OK now I can load that selection into a layer mask on let's say a color balance layer and now we can affect the uh, highlights, shadows, and midtones of the outer portions of the, these flower petals. And again, I've got some, some numbers that um, I worked on earlier, so I'm just going to punch those in to save a, a couple of minutes of you watching me drag around sliders. And uh, then you'll get to see the effect a little bit quicker. So in the shadows, let's do 34, 59, 50, enter. And in the highlights, you want 12 and 34 and 50. So we went from a yellow flower to sort of a, a coral on the outside and more of a hot pink magenta on the inside. Uh, let's add some vignetting so we can kind of draw our eye a little bit closer into this flower. One way you can do that is adding a curves adjustment and dragging down the overall uh, exposure and we only want this to be um, visible on the outside, not the inside of the flower. So I'm going to draw a uh, circular. You can drag the, um, the selection around by holding space bar and, and holding your cursor down and just kind of getting that into position like that. And I need to fill this, this circle with black so that the curves adjustment is not going to be applied in here. And since I have black in my background, I can hit Command Delete and it will um, erase or take away or hide the curves adjustment inside the circle. Um, but obviously we have a hard edge here. So uh, what I can do is go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur and just put like a, a nice uh, a big transition so that we don't see that hard edge. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And if you want to make this vignette um, even more dramatic, you can come back to your uh, curves adjustment and, and you know and drag it down even further. So it's really up to you. And if I turn that off and on, you can kind of see the effect it, it's had, it has there. And maybe I want to blur that a little bit more. So filter and blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just take it up a little bit more. So that's looking pretty good. Um, okay, uh, let's say we want to uh, uh, sharpen some of the detail in the, the flower petals or even the, the center point of the, the flower, the stamens as well. 
uh, let me show you a sharpening method that you can use. So I'm going to make a two stamp visible layer. So command option shift and E twice. All right. And I'm going to go back to my lower one and I'm going to hit uh, filter blur Gaussian blur. And I'm going to drop this down to maybe like six or seven. Okay. Now, really what I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, just I want to maintain somewhat the edges, but uh, just kind of blur things uh, together. So we're going this is sort of like a frequency separation uh, technique. Now what I can do is grab my top layer and go to layer, or sorry, image, apply image. And I can make sure I change my layer from layer two to layer one, which is the lowest of those two stand visible layers that we made. Um, I'm going to hit add two and the offset of zero is good. And um, I want to make sure that invert box is checked. And you can kind of see if you're familiar with uh, creating a, a high pass layer for sharpening, this is very similar, but uh, it doesn't create as much of the white haloing or fringing around the edges. And it's just a better quality of a sharpening technique, in my opinion. Um, so let's hit OK, and uh, we can hide this layer now. We don't need that, and we can change this to uh, like a, a hard light or uh, soft light or vivid light. You can um, zoom in a little bit to see, you know, what it, what it's affecting. I think that looks pretty good. So we can toggle this on and off, and you can see, um, you know, it's it has pretty good effect on. Uh, crispening up the edges or the detail in the flower petals. You can kind of see the, the threads and sharpening up the, uh, the stamens a little bit. So if you wanted to do this selectively, you could mask out uh, some areas on this. Let's say you wanted to make the center really sharp, but the petals not as sharp. You could always uh, uh, mask out with a brush tool a black. You can mask out the, uh, the sharpening. Um, and you could create another sharpening level, or you can just decrease the opacity on, on your masking here. I mean, there's a number of different things you can do, but um, uh, the bottom line is to use that sort of frequency separation technique for sharpening instead of uh, a high pass or a smart sharpen or any of these other uh, filter sharpen methods. So uh, that's a look at how you can change the color of something in Photoshop, um, how to create a vignette, and uh, one way of applying some sharpening to your image. Okay guys, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, please stay tuned to evervisions.com or please subscribe to the YouTube channel to see some new videos that I'll be updating uh, throughout each week. And I know there's a lot of places that you can get uh, Photoshop photography and Lightroom information. So again, thanks for checking me out and uh, stay tuned. Also, check out the evervisions.com website to see my uh, three-part Seascape tutorial where I'll first show you how to use Lightroom only with one exposure to add some punch and pop to a Seascape image. Next, we'll take three bracketed images, bring them into Photomatix, juice them up a little bit, and then bring them back into Lightroom for some further juice. And then in the third part, we'll use Photoshop and a luminosity masking technique to really make that one shine and pop and uh, look a little bit more professional. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks again.